So the Trans-Pacific Partnership that we're working on, and it reflects our values in ways that, frankly, some previous trade agreements did not. It's the highest standard, most progressive trade deal in history. It's got strong, enforceable provisions for workers, preventing things like child labor. So is the president telling us that if we do this deal, that things in Vietnam are really going to change? Welcome back to The Ed Show. Case in point, there is no guarantee this trade agreement will improve working conditions around the world because we don't have control of other governments and the way they take care of the workers. It's no secret that Nike workers in foreign countries, they got it pretty rough. Uh, they deal with horrible working conditions, living conditions, and they are paid pennies for an hour's work. The documentary Beyond the Swoosh sheds light on this problem. Now, let me offer this to you. If Nike has over 300,000 employees, workers in Vietnam, wouldn't that be kind of a big stick in their economy? If Nike were to say to Vietnam, you know, we don't want to leave, but you got to treat your workers better, you think that might have an impact? Probably not, because that's the way they run their country. Nike has been improving working conditions in its factories around the world, but it doesn't go far enough. Nike factories in Vietnam are nowhere near the standards that we have here in the United States. The president says the TPP will improve working conditions. How's that going to be guaranteed? That language may be put in the TPP, but enforcement is the key. And we have never been able to enforce workers' rights, we've never been able to enforce environmental standards. So I think the president needs to step out in front of the American people, give us the detail. How can you guarantee that Vietnam is going to do this? Or Brunei, where there's Sharia law. Do you and I, as taxpayers in America, do we deserve that? Do American workers who are in factories every day, in the manufacturing sectors, and also in the service sector of our economy, do they deserve that? Absolutely. But we're not getting it. And until the members of Congress get it, they should not give the president the trade promotional authority, because the first thing he'll do is TPP. For more, let me bring in Charles Kernigan. He is the director of the National Labor Committee. Jim Keady is with us tonight, director of Educating for Justice, and Lori Wallach, director of Public Citizens Global Trade Watch. Great to have all of you with us tonight. Charlie, you first, if we can. What are these Nike workers facing in Vietnam, and what guarantee could you give our viewing audience tonight that if we do the TPP, their conditions will change? Well, there will be no change. Uh, the workers have no rights whatsoever. There's 330,000 uh, Vietnamese workers. Uh, they have no rights. They are getting 56 cents an hour. Uh, they have just zero ability to move. So, personally, they don't have any, any kind of uh, motion to go forward. They can't be, they're not participants in this. Uh, they're just staying there uh, with tremendous, uh, like, lack of, of, of rights, uh, lack of, of, of having enough money to survive with your children. Uh, so, now, this is a disaster. All right, Jim Kitty, you traveled to Vietnam and saw these factories. What did you see? Yeah. Actually, it was, it was Indonesia, uh, Indonesia's third largest producer of, of Nike products. I went there in 2000 to try and see what lives were like for Nike factory workers. I lost my job coaching at St. John's University in, uh, back in 97 because I refused to wear Nike's products because of the way they were being produced in sweatshops. It eventually led me in the summer of 2000 to move to Tangerang, Indonesia, where I went and lived with Nike factory workers, tried to survive on the Nike sweatshop wage at the time. It was $1.25 a day. I lost 25 pounds in a month living on a Nike sweatshop wage in a rat-infested hellhole. And I met 
the women and men who made the Nike products that I, as a college athlete and a professional athlete, had worn for years, and I never thought twice about who they were and what their lives were like. Mm -hmm. And I promised them I would come home and I would advocate for them. And I thought I would do it for a few months, and I've done it now full time for 15 years. Uh, the workers are paid a poverty wage. We still have cases of union busting, verbal abuse, physical abuse. I was in Indonesia a year ago. I was I helped to organize a demonstration outside of Nike's headquarters of hundreds of workers. Uh, they were we had a case with. What I call the Nike Nine, nine trade unionists who are exercising their rights, saying we want to have better wages and working conditions. They were illegally fired. They were threatened by the local police and military. They had banners at the demonstration saying, President Obama, please help us. Nike's always union busting. Right? And the president is at Nike's campus today in Oregon saying that they're the model of what trade should look like. If I were in the president's shoes, I would be saying that Nike is the absolute opposite of what good and fair trade should look like. Lori Wallach, what about the president's speech today? What was wrong with it, if anything? <laughs> There was very little in there that represented what's really in the text of the TPP. So the president said, oh, this is different. We're going to have a different outcome. This isn't NAFTA. But actually, the text of the TPP has the same offshoring promotion provisions that were in NAFTA, but they're bigger and stronger. And it has the labor standards that were in Bush's trade agreement since 2007 mm -hmm. that have proved totally ineffective, so Charlie's spot on. There's nothing in this agreement that's going to make Vietnam raise its wages from 60 cents an hour, but there are things that are going to promote the offshoring of American jobs and push down our wages by making us have to compete with the workers making 60 cents an hour. Mm -hmm. Charlie, uh, Nike's saying that they are making real efforts to improve working conditions. you believe that? Uh, not at all. Not for a second. And so how would the United States or any country dictate to them in an agreement, a trade agreement, that those conditions would change? I mean, that's basically what the president is saying, that this has got new language, new provisions, new climate standards, new labor standards. How in the world would we ever go down that road to make sure that that's the truth? Well, it's a sweatshop all over again. It's not going to change uh, until there is a very serious attempt to give workers the right to organize, to have a decent living, to have a voice, and not like in Vietnam, where workers have no voice whatsoever, 100 percent mm -hmm. zero. 330,000 workers have no rights. Across Indonesia and elsewhere, there's a million workers who are de being denied their, their rights, their most minimal rights. So we're still going downward. Uh, and, and not upward. Charlie, uh, tell me, when you hear an advocate for this trade agreement say that this is about emerging markets, what does that mean? What's your definition of emerging markets? Well, just to rip off the working people, uh, just like Bernie Sanders is, is, is talking about so much and so eloquently. Uh, this is not a, a level playing field. Uh, this is just a way like Nike, they can do whatever they want and give these workers such poor wages yeah. and hey, such Lori, miserable what, conditions. What about writing the rules? The president keeps talking about these rules, that if we don't do this, China's going to write the rules. What's he talking about? <laughs> well, first of all, the rules in the TPP are not our rules. They're not the kind of rules you would have or I would want or most Americans can benefit from. They're the rules that the 500 corporate trade advisors who've helped write the TPP got. Mm -hmm. So what do we see? The TPP has the old NAFTA-style offshoring promotion rules. And when it comes to labor, basically what Charlie was saying, we're not going to see the wages of folks in Vietnam go up like the president guaranteed in the speech mm -hmm. they can buy our stuff because the exact same rules just, for instance, were in the Peru Agreement from 2009. Mm -hmm. During the period that agreement's been in effect, the labor conditions have gotten worse. Peru literally rolled back its labor and environmental standards. Nothing happened. They weren't thrown out of the agreement. This is basically saying to the elite in Vietnam and to the companies that want to offshore, 
go for it, just do it. Okay. Jim, finally, the president says this will level the playing field. Yeah, What's yeah. your response to that? As a former pro athlete and college athlete, I laugh. I know what a level playing field looks like. And in this situation, you know, using a soccer uh, metaphor, it's 11 against 1. And they bought the referees. <laughs> right. This is the, the the playing field is not level. Okay. Nike's got everything they want, including the president of the United States. Unfortunately, disappointing many people in our country supporting this deal. Charles Kernigan, Jim Keady, and Lori Wallach. Great to have you with us tonight. Thanks for the story.